you know, it's still a trophy. Like, it's still considered a major international trophy, but, you know, it quote-unquote, I guess, means less. <laughs> um, and it was kind of on, like, really short notice, so I can understand why there was, you know, lack of attendance. And as we said, it's in Vegas. Vegas is kind of like Miami, you know. Vegas just recently got sports teams, mm-hmm. population of residents oh, in Vegas. They're celebrating right now. Their hockey team won the Stanley Cup, so there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Congrats to the Congratulations, you know, to the Golden Knights. So. Mad respect. Mad respect. So quickly in the league, just six years. But, yeah, um, population of Vegas doesn't really care about sports like that. And then on top of that, um, a lot of the people you see in Vegas, they're probably going to be tourists just passing through as opposed to actual residents. So all that combined probably made for um, a smaller um, number of attendants. But – um, I think um, those who did make it to the stadium, um, they saw world-class soccer on offer, mm-hmm. um, world-class play by the U.S., the best play that I've ever seen them play my entire life. And they easily dispatched Mexico and Canada by a combined score of five, five to nothing. You call that and, easy? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that, I, yeah. I think – I mean, I have to agree with you. Mexico looked frustrated. Like, they could, they were chasing ghosts, Miguel. I mean, it was just bad. I mean, I've never seen a team, a proud organization with so much introspection. And, you know, after the third place game, they fired the coach, Miguel. They fired him and said, you know, we're I, done I with saw you. That. I saw that. Today. I saw that. I think that was just so bad. I was like, well, wait a minute. These were your guys. Why are you firing the coach? <laughs> no, but let me ask you this because I'm not. I'm not privy on uh, the Mexico roster, uh, but was that a Mexico B team or was that their A team? Thank you. Was it? I, I don't know. I, I, was, I, just, I mean, I, I, they weren't our A guys. I mean, they weren't those A guys. I mean, most of those guys are still, you know, uh, there were maybe one, maybe two of those guys and from um, from European teams. Okay. And the rest of those guys I haven't even heard of, but they were – but. The, you know, the, the the main thing is, to your point, Miguel, wow. a lot of those guys are older, slower. They're like maybe one or two generations past, okay? Um, the American team, young, hungry. They got steel legs. I've watched those guys. Yeah, it, you know, the evil daddy. Yeah, Ochoa was in goal. You know how many generations ago when he was young? Okay, I mean, <laughs> I mean, okay. I'm not saying he's an old man. I mean, we're talking about goalkeepers. Goalkeepers, I'm not saying they're a dime a dozen or anything else, but you know, for you know, for goodness sake, the rest of the players, I mean, they were in their prime about maybe a couple of generations ago. Now, no, come on, you, you, you're not chasing. I mean, you're a bunch of grown men going after kids. Come on, you know uh, that 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 makes no sense. I mean. But you're going to blame it on the coach, and that's the that's the thing about Mexican football. Their pride sometimes get in the way of common sense. Now, you know, I, I, I can't really point my fingers on their fans when our fans can sometimes go borderline from good guys to straight up stupid. And what I mean by that, I mean Greg Ball, Berhalter. I mean, your thoughts on this, guys? I mean, I'm going to start off with Miguel. Okay. Um, the last time we talked about Greg Barhalter, we remember him, right? He got yeah. himself into some sort of trouble that really wasn't his fault. <laughs> okay. He was somehow involved of the nonsense because a couple of soccer parents couldn't understand why his why their kid got benched. Okay. More on that later, you know, with Anthony Merced. Um, but you know, what angered me was not his return, Miguel was the fact that your federation lied, okay, and said we were going to look for him when you really had him to come back all along. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, you know, the thing with Be- Berhalter, okay, when all this thing uh, happened uh, with the allegations uh, that the Reina family put up against him, you know, he was, um, you know, he was guilty of, you um, of putting his hands on his wife, no, no, kicking his wife at some point 30 years ago. Okay. So, 30. you know, 30 years ago. Yeah. So then it was like, um, he was being canceled. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, I would say that I wouldn't have ha- I've had a problem with him being, you know, 
not rehired, you know, just because of that incident, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it really put a stain on uh, U.S. soccer. Okay? Uh, now, the other thing is um, they, it was like a six month thing of search yeah. that they told us that they were searching uh, high and low. low for right, exactly. Coach. And they were interviewing this and, he, and interviewing him and him and him. And then in the meantime, they had two interim coaches. Okay. Mm. And then in the end, they went back to Burhalter. Okay. And a lot of the pundits uh, are saying, like, why would you do this again? Don't you want to move forward? Uh, there were several uh, coaches that were in the running. I think Tata Martino was in the running. Um, he, he became the coach of uh, he was Inter Miami. Yeah, so I mean, right. He was a name. Patrick Vieira, uh, Thierry Henry. Henry yeah. And they all who knows? Who knows who else, you know? Um, but let me just throw this in. I read today that one of those journals uh, – he tweeted that the reason that they didn't get a bigger name than mm -hmm. Burhalter was because mm -hmm. they would have had to pay that that guy a lot of money, you know, mm -hmm. and they would have had to have paid the you the, the women's national team coach like an equal amount of money. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how true that is, but. Could that be the reason that he was rehired? I don't know. If it okay. is, it's, if it, if it is, it's a lazy one, Larry. I mean, you yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> went off. You, <laughs> you just yeah. went off when you when you heard the news and you didn't waste any time saying. And I quote: "This was chicken bleep." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very. You know, I mean, I mean <laughs> that was being based, okay. Based on your thoughts, there, you thought that this was a legit recruitment, and then somehow yeah. U.S. Soccer said, "Never mind, we got our guy," and it turned out to be it was the only guy we had along. <laughs> That's why journals are having a fit right now. To Miguel's point, they're like, "Wait, yeah. wait, hold it." Then why go? Why? Pull us through all that nonsense for six months. For six months, yeah, for we six waited months. for this for six, six months. months to get the old guy back. Come on, he 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 he's not like that, man. I mean, he's he's good. He was good in Columbus. We saw it, you know, firsthand in the playoffs. But like, he's not. I mean, to be fair, guy. most of the players are MLS guys. Okay, half the exactly. squad are MLS guys. So you got an MLS coach. Great for the league, but then you get schooled <laughs> by the Netherlands, like, top level. you know, you know, top level teams, and you get schooled. I mean, that was Completely. that's why you know that's why fans, you know, I don't really take my stake, you know, on the U.S. men's national Twitter. I don't, it's not first of all, it's not even a real place. <laughs> okay, the, the 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 folks over there are borderline psychos, and I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, mm. but. You know, this is in some cases what they're talking about. They want to see the team, which is probably the best generation of talent they've had since the last generation of talent. And they want to take them. They want a guy that can take them next level. My personal thing, it ain't going to be Jesse Marsh. Take him next level. It ain't going to happen. Okay. No. Um, Greg, I like him, but they're probably going to wind up in the same level. And, you know, you're not going to bring them up. You want somebody with experience who's been who, who survived not just knife fights, but wars with bigger clubs, bigger teams, bigger nations, footballing nations. I mean, you're not gonna do it with a guy that, you know. I mean, yeah, they had a good, they had a nice World Cup run. Well, yeah, you got out of the group, but that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get out of the group, right? So. Yeah. It's, it's hardly, you know, it's hardly an accomplishment. And to do it in the way that you, you know, well, we're still undefeated against England. <laughs> of okay. all, you know, of all, like, so, I mean, I, it, we, where the rest of the world gave it a shrug, you're supposed to be giving me fear. And you need somebody with that experience. I like, you know, I like to, uh, I like Triple G. I do. I don't hate the guy. I do. 
Um, he's not a bad guy, but, he no. ain't that, but he's not the guy. If you want to take no. a team next level, he ain't hit. He's not no. hit. Neither is Marsh. I mean, Marsh was a great guy, great coach for us, but he was a spectacular failure in Europe. Um, if we're going to be honest, right? So you want to bring him in. Thierry Henry, last time I saw him, he was an assistant um, with Belgium. Hardly heard from that guy. I mean, he's got a soccer IQ that's off the scale. But do you really want to put that to you know put that to the test for someone who, as a manager, failed? I mean, didn't do so hot, you know, with a Paris team. Excuse me, Monaco. They basically chased him out of there. Thierry yeah. Henry, of all people, you chase him out of there. I mean, the it's players, original club. Yeah, original club. They chased him out of there. I mean, which was I, shocking to me. I mean, you know, Montreal. Uh, I mean, we're talking about Joey Saputo, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the George Steinbrenner of MLS. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, talk about ham-fisted. He, you know, but, um, I mean, Henri was a, a assistant coach. I mean, he didn't have the chops. So we're talking somebody who can basically you know, um, take him next level. Unfortunately, many of those guys who can are already taken. They are. They're already taken. I mean, some of the top international coaches, you're not going to, you know, and some of them are right now in clubs locked up, okay, um, like Jose Marino. You're not getting, you're not taking him from that Italian club. Sure, It'll be a shootout before me. that happens. Sure, you're not touching the U.S. job, man. You know, Carlo, Carlo Carlo Ancelotti just got hired by Brazil. Okay. Yeah. So he's he's he snatched up Madrid. Brazil stretched, snatched Brazil. Them up. Yeah. You know, but he's got experience both on the club championship, inter inter championship, uh, intercontinental championship level, yeah. and the international level. See, you would have showed him the dollars. He would have come here. I'm Precisely. Okay. I mean, not everybody. You know. You know. I mean. <sighs> Eh, you know, I mean, and, and I'm gonna roll it back a little bit. You know, he wasn't, you know, in in the eyes in you know in the eyes of the public, you know, March was a spectacular affair. But for me, you know, he he got them, he helped them survive the bounce, but only for so much. The idea is not to survive, but to thrive, and that's why Leeds chased him out. Said, okay, you know what? They weren't, you know, they, they 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 weren't, you know, they weren't banking on Jesse. You know, they they just they took look where we are, and even after Jesse left, and they said, okay, we're going to replace Jesse with somebody else, they still fell out <laughs> in the Premiership. They still fell out. So there yeah, you go. Yeah, he he bet on these American guys bringing in these American guys uh, onto leads, and they kind of failed. Like, yeah. it, uh, except for Tyler Adams, Adams, he was he was pretty good, but then he was injured. He and we didn't. He he didn't play for a bunch of their games at the end there. Uh, but those other two guys didn't do well. Okay, no, so well. that's that's kind of on, on him. Okay? Excuse me. That's kind of on him. So yeah. whatever. The thing, well, he did the a poll um, to move What's back that? on. Excuse me. The, yeah, the thing with Leeds is like he was replacing a beloved manager, Marcelo Bielsa. Yeah, who, who got him out. He was treated like God. Years out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. They, they had a statue for the dude. <laughs> Yeah, damn near, yeah, and damn, they had a statue. They had picked, they had paintings of him, Saint Bielsa. I'm serious. Yeah, People they, worship yeah, this dude. That man over now there. that's like, a guy that I would love to see the United States go get. Yeah. Now that's a dude. You know, I would let's see go get. But Bielsa? yes. Well, he's just signed with Uruguay. So yeah, there you go. There you go. See, that's what I'm talking about. This is what <laughs> this is what drives me nuts. I mean. You want to talk about next level? These are the guys that can help you get it on Ansel. I mean, these were legends, Ancelotti. I mean, hey, you know, but as we all know, I mean, a coach can only take a team so far that they really want to listen to someone who is sage, and someone would go down to the next level. So I guess maybe they focused on Triple G because many of the players um, they're familiar with him, and they're going to roll with him. Um, it's not what. You know, it's not what the fans want, unfortunately. Thank God none of them are GMs. Um, but 
it is <laughs> if you if, if you spend the time you know you spend an hour listening you know reading whatever you're reading in u.s men's national twitter you'll see why um but it is what it is so um we did a poll you know a few days ago guys i want to bring this up to you okay when greg berhalter was hired when he was returned to his head roaching and, and you can see the you know this is why i love the group you know the group they know you know they know what the deal is okay um 54 of you guys said and i quote i hate it you know 34 don't love it or hate it eight percent really don't particular care any particular way and of course four percent at four four percent absolutely love it i mean for all the reasons that we just talked about um it 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 really comes to you know it really comes to mind of why you know they made you know it wasn't so, to me i don't know about anybody else but to me it wasn't so much of the hire but you're strung fans along that's the thing that really got to me. That's the thing that really got me upset. Like, wait a minute. It, it, I thought you were actually looking. Speaking of looking, okay, we're going back to the, you know, from international back to clubbing, of course, our beloved Red Bulls. Last time we saw those guys, they were stuck with four wins and right now in 14th place. Now, we have two very important matches upcoming this week one of course being charlotte fc the other atlanta sc now the red bulls except for a little quick trip down to columbus they're gonna spend the next four games at home now gentlemen the question i have to ask for the both of you do you see these two upcoming matches as somewhat important very important or uber important miguel start with you (laughs) No, no, I think I think both matches are uber important, okay? Because if they don't get uh, maximum points, they're going to be in the hole, okay? And mm. as I always they're like to foot, say... They're, yeah, they're yeah. one foot on it anyway, right now. As, as, as I always like to say that you can't win MLS Cup in X month. Like right now, we're in June, okay? But uh, like you like to say, uh, Gary, but you can certainly lose it. Okay. Yeah. If you if you fall too too far behind, <laughs> much. If you fall too far behind, you're gonna, you're gonna stay you're, there. In the longer, yeah, you know, we've seen. You're it. gonna be in a hole. Okay. Right. You're we've gonna be it. in a the hole. The longer okay? you stay, the longer you stay. I mean, that's just it. The yeah, good yeah. news is that when you look at the standings, Lonre, two wins put them right back in the hunt. Yes. So, how would you feel about these two games? Is this a must win for these guys or? And we got plenty of time. Absolutely, must win. I'm sure you did your homework. I'm sure you did your homework with uh, with Charlotte FC. Um, You know, they just signed a guy. (laughs) I'm looking at the transfer. (laughs) They just signed a dude. Um, Not too long ago. More on him later. Uh, Yeah, no. As a matter of fact, um, if you've ever been a fan of, of course, uh, Rangers FC, the name Scott Arfeld should be very familiar with you folks. Is with um, Charlotte FC. That midfielder, that baller. You know, put ink to paper, and he's on, going to be playing. Guess so Will he be rolling with us? I don't know. I don't. And we'll have to take a look at the team talk later. But the last time we saw these two teams clash, Lon Ray, it was a knife fight down in that hot turf in that ridiculous stadium. That's a foot now. I could call it a ridiculous stadium. It's a great looking stadium um, down there in Charlotte. But they yeah. always play us tough. Always. I mean, yeah, they're all a good four, crew. I mean, all four <laughs> times. All four times we've played them so far, counting the Open Cup match last year, um, it's always been a, a knife fight. It's always been a dog fight. For yeah. some reason, a lot of the um, new expansion teams that come in the league want to prove themselves and test themselves against Not us. even prove them. It's just better built. <laughs> better built. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say they're better built, but um, okay. I mean, I mean, yeah. Obviously, you know, look, looking at them in the table, um, they are obviously ahead of us by three points. Um, so they're not obviously not too too bad. I mean, you know, one winner, like one drop for them, and they're right back in the in the thick of the playoff standings. But um, it, this is a team that always, you know, loves and hates playing against us. They always get up for it, but you know, we yeah, why is we why, a lot of problems. why is that love and hate? You know, flush that out a little bit. Why is that? Yeah, yeah, they love it because they love the challenge of playing against us. You know, we're mm-hmm. an original um, ten MLS club. 
you know, I'll be sort of 96. And, you know, until up until like 2018, we were always like the benchmark for the the model of like all other MLS clubs to follow, especially in terms of regular season success. It's a long time ago now, man. It's 2018. Depressing. That's a, that's when that's when things stopped at that point. But we can go back that again if we if this front we office could. and sporting director you know need to have a nice little conversation with themselves. We we were talked about that with Anthony Merced. Um, the last game was a one-one draw between the two teams. Um, this was back in March. Um, you know, Manuel scored so far his only goal of the season. Um, in the 43rd minute, open the scoring, and then Andres Reyes had another unfortunate own goal um, with about 15 minutes left, and then the you know the score ended up 1-1. Manuel has only scored for us against Charlotte. Fun fact. That's Fun it. Fact. He scored. He scored a brace. Um, it's the post on everybody else, but he scores. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he hits the post or just misses against everybody else. I want that guy so to cut. Goes. I'm going to be honest with the both of y'all. I want that guy to cut loose so. Bad. I mean, mm. he hustles. He ain't yeah. dogging it out there. He hustles. He gets into spots. It's just his accuracy is just a little off. I don't get the somewhat hate from some of the guys in the group. I don't know you why. Are. Okay. But we're talking about a player that wanted to be here. Okay. And he shows it. Okay. Van oh, Gary, 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 go, Gary, go ahead, Gary. go ahead, go ahead, Miguel. I, I, I was waiting for this. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, come on, listen, listen, listen. I was oh, waiting Lord. for this. You go sign, ahead. you sign a guy to score goals. Okay, yeah, I was waiting and for this. He's not sticking them in. He's. I'm not arguing with you. No, 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 no. He no. had a plethora of chances to stick it into the back of the net. Okay, but the who do you got? Hasn't done it. And then okay? who do you, you got? Know what? But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this, Gary. Almost, it doesn't count. Of course not. The poll, and the, the law post, averages, no, it don't. Post, I mean, it doesn't whoa, count. Whoa, whoa. Okay? Okay. He's going to start whoa. sticking them in, <laughs> and then, and maybe then people won't be up as uh, – up his butt criticizing him. I no. mean, you know what? The criti- I, I never said the criticizing – the criticism uh, – uh, you know, the criticism wasn't valid. I just okay. don't get the hate. That's what I don't get. Okay, I'm like, what are you hitting this guy? Okay, if you're mad because he ain't putting them in the, you know, putting the onion, you know, the the uh, the, you know, the bowl in the hole, as they say, I get it. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. You know, in this case, Miguel. But the hate. No, but what the do hate? you mean by hate? Like, like how are people? <laughs> I'm talking Alex Wheel hate. All right, this, uh, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, uh, I wouldn't go that far. I'm, I'm telling you, go... back off. You know, just back up yeah, a bit, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, back up a bit, guys. I mean, I've actually went in one on one with somebody. You, you need to explain to me why you need you need to get him off the roster. You're kidding me, right? No, but you know what? I mean, I understand. Muil, Muil was a frustrating player, Gary. Come on, I and mean, now he's doing well that... in Nashville. I guess, you know, I don't watch <laughs> all of his games, bro. But he wasn't appreciated you know here, and he's doing well in Nashville. Just it's saying. Like, Just it's saying. Like, it's like, you Just know, no, 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 listen, listen. Players here, they go elsewhere, and they thrive. Take a look at Derek Etienne, for instance, okay? A fact you know? that, uh, a fact that makes me just want to smoke somebody. Just straight up, just beat up the guy that said, eh, leave him off. You know, another player that want one the ball, another ball that wanted to be here. No, but you okay. know what? Sometimes it's a, it's all about maybe they're not good in the system. Here we go. Okay, because here <laughs> you know it's I all have about no running, run, 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 run. I have it's no defense. I, you know me. I have no defense over that. None. <laughs> okay, I I can't. You know, you know, I can't defend the indefensible. But we're gonna talk about basically the first half. I mean, okay, yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done, okay, okay. Uh, both on the pitch and on the team. And I'm talking to everybody also in the, you know, um, in the live audience. It, it could have been worse. That's how I looked at it. That's how I look at it, okay? It could be worse. Um, you had a coach that was held against his will. And you eventually had the fire, okay? The, the team has not played like 18 since i don't know training camp they look like a bunch of individuals which is great which we reason why we see 
flashes of brilliance, but not much else. Okay, we had to water through a ridiculous incident that um, involved a racial epithet perceived to be uttered by someone that you paid five million for, and where it alienated nearly half the fan base, and they were really going at it. I mean, the fan base was yelling at the supporters, the supporters were yelling at the fan base. It was ridiculous, okay? And yet, we're three points out from last playoff spot. That's why I say this this could have been worse. Um, Long range from start to finish up until now. Of course, this is going to be a part B when Anthony Merced comes in in about five minutes from now. How did you see the see? You know, we we talked about this right yeah. in our first show. They said yeah. there was a lot of promise. Has yeah. that changed your mind since? Yeah, it has. Okay, here it comes. <laughs> I'm not entirely confident we're getting to the playoffs, man. I think our playoff streak ends this year for what I've seen so far. There's been good thing imp- or bad thing. Good thing or bad thing? Um, honestly, kind of a good thing because then this club could actually hit the reset button and look itself in the mirror and actually start giving a damn. Red Bull Global can hopefully, can hopefully actually start giving a damn about this club, the so-called ugly redheaded stepchild that we oh, are compared to Leipzig and Salzburg, and actually, you know, it's help, help us out <laughs> and open a checkbook and okay. help us spend on quality footballers, man, because... Well, I'm with you on that, but the 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 the, the, the that narrative, I mean, it, it's been... I don't think they're going to do that. Okay, go ahead, Miguel. Go I don't, ahead. I don't, I don't think they care. If, if even, they even the, if we don't make the playoffs, if even. they miss the playoffs, I don't think it's anything to them. That's that's what you know. That's what I have in my mind, and a lot of people have that in their mind. You know, okay? They're all about the the rebels, daddy rebels right here. <laughs> They're all about the advertising, and really, they couldn't care less. Okay, so that's just my two cents. Go ahead. Okay. I mean, you know, based on what you said, you know, we talked about high expectations. We talked about, you know, the word that we don't dare utter, <laughs> which is optimism. Oh, um, you know, that that's a very da- dangerous word around here, of course, on the discussion group. But since then, Miguel, um, what's your good, your bad, your ugly? Uh, you know what? I got to be honest. I don't think there's been much of good, okay, no. uh, no. for the, you know, the first half of the season. I, w- I will say that the bright spots have been the play of John Tolkien and Daniel yes. Edelman, you know. And if you go by um, reports, uh, Tolkien might be on his way to Europe this summer. Who knows? Okay. But certainly and I don't Daniel's think Daniel's being looked at. Yeah, and but certainly oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, he'll be with us next season, most definitely. Okay, uh, now that's still good. Okay, now as far as the bad, we can go with the uh, the Benzier fiasco. Okay, what a fiasco! Uh, <laughs> I mean, come on, what a fiasco! Oh, Lu- boy. Lu- Lewis, what a Morgan. disaster! Yeah, the disaster. I mean, yes, disaster. Lewis Morgan being hurt. He he came back and he got hurt again. You know, that's that's no fault of, of his, but he's like, he was our best player, man. Like last year, and then you know, um, I, I don't think Lucinius has hit, has hit the heights that we saw when he first got here, like the first half of that season. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and the other sort of like fiasco is has been. Are our forwards okay? I thought we were definitely going to get. Let's not goals. forget about one thing that's you know that's okay. very important, and, and, and this yeah. is a major qualifier, gentlemen. The team has had to deal with injuries, okay? Yeah, most definitely. But injuries. you know what? What's Probably the, harder okay. than most clubs. But look, but look, but look, but look. Go ahead, go ahead, Miguel. Go ahead, What's Miguel. the quality that we have after those guys are injured? It's oh, okay. not much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but that's right. the problem here. Okay. There's not much after that. We would have had to have like a starting 11, all our guys healthy and firing on all cylinders, okay? Mm. Most of our guys are not firing on all cylinders and several Hence of our Hence what best I said players, about playing like a team. 
uh, and several of our best players are, uh, you know, I have been injured. You know, I must I, another positive. Let me go back to what's positive. Okay. I think it's like the uh, the firing of the coach. Okay, um, Gerhard Struber, which if you re- read between the lines after he he was sat, uh, a lot of guys like I don't think they liked him a lot. Okay, I mean, or he was held a, against. I, I looked at it as he was held against his will. He wanted to go back home, and it and it and it showed. Yeah. <laughs> in, in his coaching performance, it was like you know what, you can't fire me. I quit, <laughs> but I quit. <laughs> but the thing camp. is, but the thing is, and I posted this on the Facebook group, bro. You could have Pep Guardiola here. Yeah, you okay? said this. And what is he gonna difference. do with the players that we have? Okay, I I don't know. I, okay, go ahead, please. That's the question that I have for you guys. My, the answer to that is, it's a thin bench. Yeah, simple as that. It's a thin yeah. bench. Something that I've, you've heard me preach more than once. I said we need to have a team that is strong from bench to pitch, and in this league, you don't need much. Okay, just have basically what you have is two quality starting lineups. You have a group A and a group 1A. And if you don't have that, you can forget any thought of MLS Cup or anything else for that matter. Okay. Um, A lot of these players were hung around from last season. They really didn't add any pieces outside Van Zier. Um, And, you know, Joking talked about, you know, like you know, John Amaral said, he talked, okay, about getting an attacking midfielder and, you know, a center back, which we don't, you know, an additional center back from last. And, you know, and thank goodness for uh, Hassan was- Endom, who's been stepping up brilliantly um, yeah, yeah. in some cases here and there. But we've always known about Hassan during the Red Bull 2, you know, two days. He was the anchor of that defense during, you know, during the time. So I was very happy to see that. However, <clears throat> injuries, okay? Um, a lot of guys in the midfield was gone. I mean, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, it really set things back. We missed a lot of players, you know, because of that. Um, Lucinus, you know, he was the man to serve the drink. But unfortunately, after he got trucked, by defender after defender and center back after center back with absolutely no cover. Okay, he wound up in you know in in the injury you know uh, on list. You you talked um, you know you, you you it's this is the type of thing that we have when you have a crew for this you know for, for this season. If we can get everybody healthy, we stand a chance. But right now, Nagoma not around. Okay. Um, Lewis Morgan, there's no, you know, there's no word yet if he's going to be back this year or if, you know, <laughs> you know, back this year for, for, for all intents and purposes, he Goma opted might be our for, best striker. you know, excuse me, Goma might be our best striker, but he's hurt. You know, he had a setback again, you know, yeah, I know. again, he had a setback, you know, so injuries are a big part of that. Uh, um, keep forgetting the kid we got, we grabbed from Cincinnati, um, um, you know, he's hurt still. Okay. We needed him. He was playing well up until he got hurt, you know, in, you know, so I like to, you know, the one person I like to, you know, have a nice little, little talk to is our strength and conditioning coach. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I know you're not a miracle worker. I'm like, can you make these guys a little more durable? Um, but that's, you know, that's, a, that is a byproduct of course of this league. This league is physical. Which of course will lead into our next segment after the break. We got Messi, and I'm wondering how long is he's going to ha- hold up because he's used to being around not all star players, but world players. Okay, that can give touches to each other on the dime. And how are you going to deal with the rough and tumble atmosphere that is Major League Soccer? Of course, our friend Anthony Merced. We'll have all those answers and a heck of a lot more if you keep it where it is. We'll be back in 30 seconds.
course, our guest here needs absolutely no introduction. Of course, he's been around for a while. That's why we have him as our certified friend of the show. He is Anthony Merced of the Red Bull News Network. And it looks like the news network, Anthony, is going to be busy <laughs> this, this, you know, this down the stretch. Of course, you being my, you know, my editor, and of course, my, my boss and all. But that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at the article my partner, um, Daniel Furstein, Furstein uh, wrote in Reflections of Current Season. And one of the things that caught my eye, of course, naturally, is the transfer window. But one of the questions... Uh, since the you know the club is good enough to dig out of the hole and it's nearly at the edge, they dug themselves in two. So now the time to make a move and do it right. So the number one problem that we've seen with this team, Anthony, and something that we've wrote oodles and oodles about, that this is a good squad, but they can't score to save themselves in a brothel. But this has been the problem that's been going for the last couple of years now. So... What's the deal? I mean, what is the deal with this organization? Do they know that this is a problem and they're going to actually do something about it? And they did, but then it blew up in their face nearly like a cheap cigar. Go ahead, sir. Your thoughts? Well, okay. We need to go back to the beginning. Uh, So Bradley Wright Phillips, we can all acknowledge, acknowledge, is the last great striker this team has had. However, we don't want to accept how we acquired him. We dumpster dived for him. He was a failure piece in Manchester City. He didn't quite work anywhere he was in England. And ever since him, we've tried to dumpster dive for the next striker to fill that hole. It hasn't happened. The, the, The nature of dumpster diving is you may find a gem, but most of the time, you're going to find duds. And so far, they found a lot of duds. Now, I don't want to call Van Zira dud just yet because he has not had a full season nope. with one head coach. Everyone else we have had up to this point after Bradley Wright Phillips have proven themselves to be a dud. So the question is whether or not they – give up on the idea of dumpster diving in order to find their, their next striker. And the, I, I'm not going to say that I accept that way of doing it, but that is the way they have done it ever since they got him in, uh, what was it, 2013. It, it, you know, it, when I look at this team, you know, when I write about this team, I want to give it hope, but I'm also giving a lot of frustration that a lot of the problems exist and for some reason either the front office don't see it or they don't care which leads to a lot of the fans in the fan base complain incessantly about not caring enough in a sports market that basically worships winners okay um we but build statues for these guys have, <laughs> but, but, but i want to be very clear okay aside from the new york yankees this market does not have winners. No, no. I mean, I mean, so, it, it, so, so, uh, you know, so, so when everyone goes, we should win, we should win. The Rangers have won two Stanley Cups in 60 years. The Knicks have never won in my lifetime. And I'm going to turn 40 in two years. They're, why? Why? I'll give you, I'll give you the New York Giants, right? Like, I'll give it to you. Like, they've, they've won a bunch of Super Bowls. Great. So let's take two. The Yankees and Giants have been the successful parts here. But this is not a successful sports city. So this whole idea that because we're in New York, they're supposed to be, I don't know, pick your, you know, pick your European. I'll say Madrid. They should be Madrid because let's be honest. No, 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 like, no, 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 so the narrative just doesn't match the expectation. Yeah, it doesn't match reality, I guess. Yeah. No, 100%. Uh, you That's know, not yeah, to say I... that they shouldn't try for that. Oh, yeah. okay. And, and, and they have most definitely failed at trying to achieve that in their own way. But to, they, they have tried within the rules of MLS. The issue is 
MLS does not operate in the way that, let's say, Leipzig or Austria does when they could be free to spend in the proper way to do things the way that they like. I mean, how many times have we seen, you know, the allocation order is gone now, but like the allocation order didn't work out or now every team is paying to make sure Inter Miami br- continues to break the stupid rules of the league. <laughs> it's just, it's just, um, it's a, it's a frustration that gets bored out on the team, but we also need to realize that like they are working within an incredibly convoluted construct. Mark wants to leave the Knicks out of the conversation. Too late. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> yeah, too late. <laughs> Miguel, you had a question for Anthony. No trade, bro. <laughs> Did I? Uh, okay, yeah. As, as we were talking uh, previous to uh, coming on here, you know, like uh, NYCFC, they've uh, – obviously, we all know, they won MLS Cup and nobody cared, okay? In New York City. Them. I mean, that, that's it. They're fans, Okay. Uh, if we ever win an MLS Cup, the only ones who are going to care are our fans. Okay, and that's it. Is I I don't know that that's enough. I think this is why this is why the current owners they don't care. Okay, so when, when when you say um, only us, who are, are you talking about? So I, I want to be very clear about the New York Red Bulls versus NYCFC. NYCFC came into a market that did not need a second team. Nope. And no, um, the New York Red Bulls do have a very solid fan base. Now, it is not enough to fill 25,000 seats, but they are very good in, at their best moments to fill 15 to 20, which is respectable. So, so it, it, they, they, they do have a very solid fan base that will follow them. They're not going to get a canyon of heroes down City Hall in New York City. But they they can um, they can very much have a respectable showing in New Jersey and um, be what they are, which is the niche market that they are currently striving to be. That's, you know, go, you know go that's fine. I I yeah. want that. I want my team to win MLS Cup. But yeah. year after well. year, it seems like these people don't care. Okay, we see Miami signing Messi. Who, who are they going to sign? They're going to sign three Di Maria. They're going to sign and Jordi Alba. They're going to sign. Yeah, but they got to give up some. They got to give up some but, of those but also, guys. But that, that's not going to work. Look, look. Right. Let's, let's be. Let's. Okay. I, I don't want to. What? I, I don't want to get too much into the Messi conversation until Gary wants me to. But but let's be real here, right? Like Busquets, Di Maria, Jordi Alba in MLS. I mean, what happens when a kid puts a knee in their thigh? Like, what, what, like, what happens when they have to run on Atlanta's turf? I mean, I, you know what? I'll just say it. Messi standing on a field in Atlanta might as well be Andrea Pirlo. Like, he's <laughs> not going to be what you think he's going to be in a team that isn't built around him. Because it does not have an ability to do that with an MLS. Like he's not, he's going to stand in the middle of a field with guys that are athletic, but aren't going to put the ball at his feet. So what you're going to be stuck with, you're not going to be stuck with Zlatan, who is the, um, the, the benchmark of what we all wish those DPs were, right? An athletic guy who comes to MLS in his late thirties, who's going to be able to run, do splits to make goals happen. Messi has never been that in, in his entire career. No. And now that he's in his mid thirties, he needs someone to give him a ball and then he needs someone to make a run for him to pass to. That's not going to happen in inter Miami. More not- importantly, I mean, yeah. you, you guys have seen many, him, him play not only in Barcelona, but also with uh, Paris St. Germain. Um, Defenders, they don't crowd this guy. I mean, by the time he gets the ball, he's ghost um, past these guys. But our, if I said this once, I said this a thousand times about our defenders in the league. They're like linebackers, okay? These dudes, wanted, why do you think I complain the reason, you know, um, Lucinus, you know, he needs clearance because those guys truck him, Okay. Once he gets the ball, you got some center back going, excuse me. Next thing you know, he's 
picking himself off the turf, <laughs> off the turf with you know dirt out of his feet. A lot of these dudes don't care, okay, and they know how to handle creative types like Messi. So while I think he's going to do okay, um, is he going to get that pass? Is he going to get that, you know, um, which he uses that as a weapon? Is he going to use that dribble speed to dribble around defenders with some of these guys? They ain't slow, as you know. They ain't slow, okay? They will match him step for step, and if Push comes for shove. They're gonna shove him into the. T- they're gonna show him. He's gonna be his. Let's put it this way: his jersey is gonna, that that pink jersey he's gonna wear is gonna be a lot of green <laughs> when it's all said and done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you something. Uh, Ta- Tata Martino has he's been announced right as the coach of Miami. No, nothing yet. Or, not yet. No. no, no. Okay, not okay but it's, nothing yet. Uh, n- not officially, but apparently he's gonna be the Inter Miami coach. You know, I I would have like faith in him bringing in players. You know? I have faith in Data if Data was starting from scratch, which is what okay. he did. With All right. right. That Atlanta team was built from day one based on his specification. To Tata yeah, Martino's, but like what he wanted. And the minute he walked away, it fell apart. <laughs> um, the, 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 the truth is, he is walking into a team that was made for no one. It was a, it's a, it's a transformer with a leg in the arm and a foot on the head. It doesn't make sense how that team is built. By the way, we don't even, they are still going through um, penalties for being an awful franchise. <laughs> so, um, and, and when I looked at, I, I still don't understand when I look at their roster, they have like three DPs, one young DP, all like, yeah. What what are they, like? How are they making this happen? I know how. I'm asking a rhetorical question. Like this league is accommodating them, but it doesn't mean that they're accommodating something that will actually be successful on the field. Because at some point, the limit will meet the the road, and they are going to have to actually play on the field, and they're not going to have the players. The way Data want them to. No. Listen, uh, Anthony, I I gotta tell you that um, I sold my Messi tickets for a Rebel ah, Arena. The re- They've uh, paid for my season tickets. I have two. Okay, so <laughs> there you go. More power, more power. Also, to Messi, right? I, I, I haven't I, decided whether I was going to sell mine or not, uh, but <laughs> I'm going to say this to all wait. the fans that are looking for tickets. There's something to remember about Lionel Messi. He has played right now longer at his age for a season than he should have. He had no breaks. So he played um, with the World Cup that he should have played would have been last summer, but instead they played it this summer because it was in Qatar. He played through that. He played a PSG season where he was very respectable and, and had a lot of assists. He is currently in his off season. And we know that when you're in your off season, you don't start in Europe until, I don't know, mid to late August. So, so um, the, 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 the date that's floating around social media saying, oh, he's going to play the Champions Cup on the whatever, the 21st or whenever, that's it. That would be a ridiculous thing to buy a ticket for. Because he is a guy. The August 26th date for the Red Bulls, if that's the right date, where, where, where it would be at Red Bull Arena, sounds like a date if you want to buy a ticket that he would play. Because it is one where, oh, that's beyond the scope of um, the offseason that somebody in Europe would have. That's a good date. But these July dates or these like weird dates that have been floated around where people are buying tickets for, let's remember, 30. 34 35 plus guy coming into MLS, you're buying a ticket. You don't know if you're going to see Lionel Messi, even if you do buy a ticket. Maybe he'll wave a hand the way Pele did in the end of in the, in, in the NASL, but uh, I don't know if you're going to see that each uh, each week. Do you remember all the fanfare and the craziness when Ibra showed up with LA, um, with yeah. LA Galaxy and um, the place was nearly sold out. It wasn't complete sellout, but it was no. You know, it, it was no, uh, but it, yeah. it wasn't sold out because they had tarped 
like right okay six thousand seats right that's what i was talking about i mean yeah but it would have been sold out yeah one third of the stadium eh, one third one eighth of the stadium was tarped off i remember fans coming in to see ibra the minute he scored everyone went nuts then when he got substituted everybody that came to see ibra went home they left okay there was nothing else there was nobody there but red bull fans who enjoyed a 2-1 win over the LA Galaxy. So it's almost like in a sense, okay, Ebra won the battle, but the Red Bulls won the war um, sort of thing. I mean, hey, I, I even was there during that masterpiece of a match over at Giant Stadium where the Red Bulls and LA Galaxy went tra- traded blow for blow with Beckham and company. Oh, what a great time we had. Mm. But the and reason who were why the stars I bro- of that game? <laughs> okay. It wasn't Beckham. Beckham was standing there to to absorb the edge. It was Edson Funnel. It was Josie Altador. It was yeah. all these guys. And, Juan and, and Paul, I think Juan Pablo Angel. Juan Pablo Angel. Juan Pablo yeah, Angel. Juan Juan Pablo Angel. Yes. We, what, what, what this country needs, what this fan base in this country needs to start doing is putting more of that love towards those guys and being like, yo, it's time for us to prove ourselves. Now that that guy is here, yes, you're facing half of the version, but go and make a legend out of your own player, not go watch that legend and being like, oh, my God, I'm so happy I saw Lionel Messi. He already has his accolades. Go make your own. Go root for your guys to make their name against that guy. I mean, that's that's what I look for sometimes. I mean, and to your credit and to your point, um, Anthony, some of the Red Bull fans, they do that. I mean, the fans that were left were Red Bull fans, and they were cheering like mad. They said, okay, it was 1-1 at the time. I've never seen the fans go nuts after the second goal because it was like, yeah, we beat that guy you know, on your squad full of all those stars, and you couldn't beat us with our kids. <laughs> it was, it was you know, at that time, it was, you know, no one talked about how the team didn't care at that time because it was the future. But what I have always said, what Lon Ray has always said, what the yeah. fan base has always said, and of course, Miguel, he has never stopped saying, is that we have to build on that. Mm-hmm. And that's where, you know, we're going to talk about next. But where does the Red Bulls go from here? We talked about how the 2023 season was, um, I kind of labeled it as this could have been worse. <laughs> well, it's perfect. This could have been worse. But you look at the team and you look at the standings and you go, wait a minute. You know, this team is in the last place. Well, they were. They climbed out of it, of course. But they're within a sneeze of making, you know, a sneeze of you know, winding up in the playoffs. Remember, nine teams get in this year. So, while this is why I said that making the playoffs for any coach running this squad, making the playoffs as a requirement because the relative ease, you know, to make the playoffs from there. eh, you got to win a champ. You know, I mean, you know, you, but you got to be in it to win it. Somehow I don't see this total doom and gloom, you know, among some people in the fan base, because I think this squad has a chance but the key point here is, Anthony, I'm sure you may would agree with me, is that they got to put it together, and they have to put it together fast, okay, starting with this homestand. These two matches coming up, I have to ask. I asked two of my gentlemen here, um, do you see this as the most important, you know, home stretch for the team this season? Would, or do you see that this is make or break? So, um it is breaking the sense that they should not lose both of these games. I, I, I do want to say that if they win one and draw one, they're in very good shape. Um, it, they, they need to walk away with a bare minimum four points from this. Um, if, 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 if they do that, they're in very good shape to make the playoffs. But I also want to stress um, two things about this team this year. One is um, there are players on this team – I'm not even talking about the DPs, but players that made this team so dynamic last season that have not had an impact this year. One has been Lewis Morgan, who has been terribly, who's hit the injury bug that last year was like an Iron Man. And the other one was Luquinhas, who last year uh, was, I mean, 
inconsistent is probably the best word. And at moments, and has continued that inconsistency this year, moments being amazing and other moments being just a, a, a ghost. And if you can get those two guys going, whatever's happening on the offense um, in the striker position will have the time to figure out while they work through their playoff issues. Because this is an incredibly good defensive team. Um, So many games they've (laughs) lost by one goal here or there. They have good defensive midfielders. Um, I will say that if if, if I could ever tell Troy, my my one question would be, why do we keep putting Yearwood up so far up the field? (laughs) This is like, it it just seems like, it, it seems like this is a team that's built for two defensive midfielders, Yearwood and Caceres right next to each other, while Morgan and Lucinius are flying up the field. And I don't know, Van Zier or, or, or Manuel and Burke are just flying around. So because their defense is that good, you can allow the creativity to work with those four guys up ahead. Um, we have not seen that at all this year, obviously because of injuries. So th- there's a handicap working here. Th- the pieces are there if they can stay healthy. I think that this team is not just a playoff team, but can hopefully live up to the expectation of a- an impressive run. I don't want to say a cup run because no. it's the New York Red Bulls. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, j- just an impressive run where at the end of the season, the fans won't be incredibly disappointed. Laura, you got a question for Anthony. Go ahead. Yeah, Anthony. Um, you know, um, we did mention, obviously, BWP, the great BWP being the last great or even really above average striker this club has had. Um, you know, um, despite the fact that Dante has been a disaster signing for the club so far, to put it lightly, um, I do think that maybe he can come good. I think what personally what's more important is an actual number 10 because you have Lucinius and Morgan, you know, they're they're more like dribblers or scorers. Um, I think we need like a true like creative playmaking number 10 to pull the strings and you know supply a passes that you know people like Burke or Manuel or Van Zier can get on the end of and you know hopefully puts a nice finish at the back of the net. Who do you think would fit the bill? On the team currently, I don't think that exists. Um, no, not on this but, team. There's no one on this team. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you're absolutely right about that because when um, when when BWP first came into the team, essentially Thierry Henry dropped into that number ten role. Yes. And yeah. he became a distributor, and he would yeah. go, and it was fantastic. When he left, it was Sasha Kleschen, who you want to talk about an immobile person. Yeah. Like, I love Sasha Kleschen to death, but well, Sasha Kleschen <laughs> was tremendous with distributing the ball while, like, running as many times as I go to the bathroom when I'm, uh, when I, when I'm uh, working in my office. Like, yeah. it's, um, yeah. he, he had a tremendous ability to not move around the field but still get the ball where it needed to. I think the thought Kaku would be that and be a long-term answer. Obviously, he wasn't. And ever yeah. since him – um there's been uh, a search for that number 10, but you're absolutely right. I don't think it exists on this team at the moment. And I think they need to look, uh, I'm going to say outside the league because interleague trades are so ridiculously dumb and, and so hard to make happen. Um, they need to look for a distributor outside so that someone like Van Zier or Burke or whoever they decide is going to be that number nine doesn't need to fall into the midfield looking for the ball. Um, he could be forward and trust that at some point the ball is going to get there for him. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Of course, Daniel Edelman is still out from towards international duty. He may return. Steven Sawada is still out with a knee injury. Omir Fernandez, I haven't seen him in a while. Of course, with a hamstring, Serge Goma still has that hamstring injury. Um, he had a setback for that. Um, the one name that uh, that has taken off that list, thankfully. Uh, it could be. Um, let me just get hold on for one second. My roster somehow just disappeared for just one quick second. Um, you know the 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 you know maybe return of well, one guy that's like coming you know here back and you know back on the you know back on the list again. Um, 
<clears throat> of course, the kid we grabbed it from Cincinnati. I mean, the Amaya, Amaya Frankie Amaya, he's you know he's off the list, thankfully. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. but he was playing well before he got hurt. Here's hoping that he can able to you know stay stay healthy. So no Tolkien for the if, in case you're wondering wh- wh- who we got left. No Tolkien, no Christian Caspers, no Corey Burke. They're off for international duty. Daniel Edelman, um may or may not be back. He looks like he's returned, but we'll see. We'll ask him. We'll ask Coach Troy. Um, you know, we'll ask Troy tomorrow whether he's going to be available selection or not. Um, and if that's the case, that will go um, well as far as shoring up the defense in that area. My only concern is there's no token, of course, on the left side, and Christian Caceres, who was playing marginally well in the middle. Um, someone's going to have to come up, you know, step up and take, you know, take his place and see where we go from there. And then, you know, the defense is fine up front. That's always an issue. It depends on who's going to be able to give the ball, and that is the constant, you know, angst. Okay, to many of the fans, um, you know. It's a, you know it, it, it's it's a, a dicey thing you know Anthony we talked about where the Red Bulls will go from here. Um, you see this as you know it's more than just a playoff team if they get healthy and if they get their act together. Um, with less than seventeen games go, left to go in the season, um, time is running out. However, they're they got a shot. I mean, if they're able to put you know if they put things you know put it together. Um, and that's the one thing, you know, that um, that's the one thing that I you know, want to cling a little bit some hope on, you know, for the fans. But hope is a dangerous thing. To, <laughs> these, these, yeah, but look, these at, days. Look, look at the teams in front of them. You're, you're looking at um, an NYCFC team that no one is talking about. Well, I shouldn't say no one. Um, holla, my guys at Blue City Radio who acknowledge that their team is a mess. Um Charlotte, who is could not be more up and down than any team I've seen. Yeah, Montreal, DC, and Orlando, all the teams ahead of them right now. Even I mean, I think Atlanta is a little more consistent. All of the teams above them are in are a chaotic mess, and we know that the Red Bulls have one thing good: that defense. If you can just knock in more than one goal, <laughs> just 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 <laughs> get it get it in, and you know that this team could really make us all look. The, the the reason why I'm so positive about this team when I think about playoffs is playoffs are defined by teams that can park the bus. This team has an ability; they don't do it all the time, based on their defensive players to park the bus and get a result if they can just nick that goal. It's and the that's MLS the thing version that of, they need to figure out. It's the MLS version of Chelsea FC, okay? Yeah, the Mourinho. Oh, shout out to Mourinho. Yes. 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 Shout out to Mourinho. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Elon Ray. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to say we're the MLS version of Spurs. We have all this promise, at least we used to have all this promise, all these great teams that don't win nothing. Uh, Okay, I mean, well, oh, yeah, please, but we ain't got the multi-million dollar talent like Spurs got, exactly. all right? So yeah. there you go. You know, I'd like to have Harry Kane right now, yeah. I, I, I kill for Harry Kane. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, serious. I, have... I kill for Harry Kane. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Joel Felix. So like, oh, yeah. Pierre and right. We don't have those. Let's guys. talk about uh, Gotham FC. Gotham FC, uh, well, they look. They, they lost. lost. Two, I mean, two nil, yeah. Remember when these girls? We were celebrating when these girls were in first place. Ooh, yeah. boy, I, I'm I'm not understanding what in the world uh, you know happened. But since then, it, it it fell out. I mean, they've lost. Looking at some of the uh, yeah, four out of five games. Ouch. I mean, it, you know, we we are we understand that. You know they're still within playoff range. They're not dead out of the water yet. That's a good you know that's a good thing, but um, you know we were singing their praises and everything else. And then what what it, it, you know once you know and Luke was the one that basically started the whole mess. Of course, it actually added to it. <sighs> Miss Morgan. Every time that girl shows up, 
against Gotham. It seemed to extend the misery with the what does she got against this squad? I don't know, but um, that's basically it. In New York Red Bull too, uh, that they talk on the uh, team when it's known as uh, Crown something. I forgot what the name of that squad went one one. I mean. It was a little bit of a controversy. The Red Bulls, too, were leading up until the 90th minute, and they had 10 minutes to stop his 10 <laughs> minutes to stop his time. You know, right. um, and it, you know, uh, uh, it was a red card that was handed out to them, and that's how they scored the second goal. And, of course, they lost in penalties, 6-5. to five. So, it, uh, you know, uh, crown legacy. Thank you, John. I mean, it's a hell of a name for a soccer team. I kind of like it. Um, but... You know they, you know that they pretty much split the series season series one one. Um, so that you know the the Red Bull two they play this Sunday. The girls are also on the road on that day too. And, you know the one thing I hate about this, you know, I want to be, you know, my my goddaughter wants to go check out a Gotham FC game, but unfortunately she's with her mom on Sundays, and she's waiting for a Saturday game. Do they play on Saturday? I have to check the schedule, but she definitely wants to, you know, check out a game because she's a big. By fan. the way, Gary, go ahead. I didn't know that Lisa on the chat there was an Arsenal fan, so shout out, Gunner. Thank you. No, I, don't no, want, no, I no, honestly no, no. don't want to hear her name. I, you know that that no, tortilla. No, no, that, no thanks to that. No thanks to her. Okay. Um, I got people yelling at me over that tortilla slot video. Still, three weeks okay. ago. Okay, yelling and screaming at me over that nonsense. I mean, that woman, uh, I don't know that. I, I love her to death, but man, she caused me some headaches. I, I, I just want to give Arsenal a big congratulations for qualifying for the Europa Conference League next season. Ah. No, 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 come on. <laughs> ah. Imagine going the league up. The yes, league. Lisa, I'm still mad at you. I mean, you and, don't and know how damage my, you caused uh, me this month. I'm also waiting for my congratulations on Manchester United winning the Champions League next year. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. That's uh, not going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening. All right. Um, predictions, gentlemen. We're talking about New York versus Charlotte. Um, Victory. I'm seeing this a win. I'm seeing this a 2 Victory, 1 win. Yeah. I'm seeing this too win because it has to happen. It has not because to I'm happen. Hoping, and not yeah. because I'm hoping it doesn't. I hope it happens. It has to happen. Yeah. yeah. If, if you have any thought about making a playoffs, you got to win this one. So it's a two win yeah. win for me. Lonre, you're up, man. Yeah, I agree. Two one. Totally two one win for the Miguel. Red Bulls. Miguel. I, I don't know what the score is going to be, but I'm predicting victory. You know, okay. because it has to happen. Thank you. Seriously. Okay. Anthony, you're in the same boat with us, or you're. I'm, I'm saying it is a year. win, but I think it's going to be yeah. tighter. I, I'm seeing a one nothing win. Oh. A one nothing win again. <laughs> I, <laughs> You're going to squeak in a goal and then hold on to, no, against a team so, that yeah. against a team that we all know that notoriously likes to pile on late with all. I I think that without John Tolkien and without a bunch of players, I think that there's um, a bit of the dynamism that they do have moving forward that isn't going to be there for this game. So I can see them nicking a goal, and I can see them keeping Charlotte off the scoreline. So I, I, I think one nil is the, the probably the 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 most predictable thing that I see in this game. We haven't talked about Atlanta FC, of course, and you know, and reasons why is because they're playing Saturday, and while I see them a not even a stiffer, te- I mean, I see them as a much stiffer test in the Charlotte game. Every time we play these guys. It's a knife fight. It's close. It goes down to the wire. Um, one of their key players went to Brazil, if that helps anything. So what they have left is still a quality side. Um, I'm calling this a draw. I don't know why, because it's, it's more of a predictable result. Both teams have quality even one is more diminished than the other we're talking about new york versus atlanta but every time these two teams meet it ends the same way either one one or nil nil i mean they you know they have creativity problems as well i mean you figured that they had you know but there's one dude that they got um that might you know you know, uh, put the ball, you know, put the ball in play. And he hurt us last time. So he might do this again, but we'll see. 
Um, he, you know, they, they beat us two nil, I believe. And then I'm looking at the, the, uh, moving, you know, nope, one, nothing. As a matter of fact, back in April 1st. Um, and, uh, it was, yeah, a, I was you know, there, I was there, you were there where you, your poor self, you know, just lost your mind, <laughs> lost your mind. And it was a cheap goal too. So that's why I'm hoping that games like this, they look at the tape and go, okay, see what happened back in April 1st. Let's not make sure we do that again. It was a yeah. goal that scored in the fifth minute. And then they held on for dear life, you know, at, you know, after that. So I'm seeing this as a nil-nil draw. Now, I'm hoping I'm wrong, okay, because I'm seeing it as both games these two teams must have, okay, in order to solidify their chances. And if they want to botch it against uh, Columbus <laughs> after that, go right ahead because Columbus is like, yeah. they're on fire. Um, but one thing about these breaks, they tend to be equalizers. The teams that come in hot, you know, and then they don't play for a while, and then they stumble against teams that they shouldn't, and then you have teams that have been stumbling along to get a second life. I'm hoping that team, I'm hoping the Red Bulls become the latter. Your thought about that Atlanta game, Lon Ray? Uh, yeah, um, I'm seeing a 1-1 draw. Um, Atlanta, of all the teams that are ahead of us, um, that were within like 9 or 10 points of us, Atlanta are the most consistent, and they are the farthest away. They are the hardest to catch. Um, saying that, I do think we have the personnel to score against them. You know, we'll be at home this time as opposed to being away down south in the, you know, in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Mm. Um, I, I don't see us beating them, but I also, I'm also not sure I see us losing to them. We've never lost to them at home in any competition in Ripple Arena. So I'm hoping that that continues. That right. continues. Miguel, you thought about Atlanta. Yeah, I'm going to be positive. I, I think that if we can get a draw, and I'm going to predict a draw, um, as Anthony said, four points out of six would be a good get in these next two games. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't completely be out of it. The disaster would be if we lose two games, then we'll be deep in the hole. But mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm confident that we can get at least four points in the next two games. I'm predicting a draw against Atlanta. And good night, Mark. Thanks for, for your help. Anthony, you have the last word. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I, I think this is a draw. Um, I think it's a 1-1. I, I think they can they can get a goal. This Atlanta team is very good moving forward, not good defensively, especially given a lot of their guys coming back from, uh, from whatever international duty they, they were assigned to. So I, I, I can see this being a 1-1 draw at Red Bull Arena. But again, yeah, they're not going to win at, at, at RBA. All right, and we'll leave it that there. Anthony, as always, please don't be a stranger. You're always welcome to join in and drop some knowledge. Lon Ray, you had a fun fact before we get going in. Please do so because we only got a few seconds left <laughs> running on the show. Uh, yeah. yeah, something like that. Um, uh, you want to share that or you want to wait until after we sign off? No, yeah, I'll just I'll just share it now. Um, so on my recent trip to LA, um, I was watching the Champions League at this bar in Culver City mm. on the sports bar. It's called Rock Rocco's Tavern. Um, I actually met um a gentleman who is from New York and is a Red Bulls fan and was wearing an old school Red Bulls jersey. Dang, I've I've already forgotten who who was on the back, but it was like it was a black jersey, which is really 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 dope. Dwayne De Rosario, his dogs. Uh, wearing the piss colored kit, I'm like, really? Of all places in LA, got Red Bulls fans here? That's wild. I, I mean, we we have fans everywhere. I mean, they, yeah. Of course, they some of them are in hiding. Most of them, of course, in the witness protection program, but they're <laughs> but they're definitely out there. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're definitely out there. I mean, it, you know, it it. We do have a very good fan base. Let, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, loyal, but, you know, they're very loyal. Um, we're we're basically masochists, of course. We you know when it comes to this team and whatnot. And, but it really is on the the front office and, of course, naturally the sporting side to get it together. Um, because if there's one group of fans that really deserve um, their moment in the sun, is this one. Yes. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's I've been with these folks for oh, 27 years. I'm probably hopefully strong enough to see them 27 year, more. I hope during those times, during during that 27 years, the streak ends um, that we can able to able to see them lift the cup. I would love to see a happy recap and talk about that. So I'll take it, Gary. 
I take a U.S. Open Cup. I mean, any cup. Well, your tagline says the best. Open MLS Cup or bust. Well, oh, exactly. <laughs> Folks, that is the end of our show. And as always, we can't thank you guys enough. All, all, all of you folks, of course, in the live audience. Once again, if you missed the live show, well, too bad. No, I'm kidding. Of course, don't worry. The recording will be available on YouTube channel and, of course, Spotify.com the very next day. Okay, you can also check our previous episodes there as well. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, hot takes, suggestions, do send them our way at our email address at rbdg at the podcast.com. That's rbdg the podcast at gmail.com. We thank you very much for Lon Ray Badmus, Miguel Nunez, and of course, our special guest, Anthony Merced. Thank you all for coming, uh, stepping by tonight. We will see you next week where Carlos Cano and Mark Coates will be headlining the show. And, of course, we'll talk about the the games that take place on Wednesday versus Charlotte. That game was at 7.30. And, of course, Atlanta Saturday night, also at 7.30. Go to the games. Enjoy yourselves. We will see you all next week. Until then, thanks for joining us. We will see you then. Good night. Goodbye for now.